circle with 10 points on it will tell us how to calculate the times tables for any number. Supposing you want to do times tables for the number 13, starting with 0 times 13, well that's 0, but what looks like 13 to me is over here because it ends in a 3. If I come down to my 3, I've got a pattern. I've crossed, passed by two numbers. So now the next number in the 13 times tables has to be over here. And easily we know that's 26. If I pass two more numbers, I'll go up to the 9, and that's 39. Then counting two numbers, <clears throat> 1, 2, I have to cross over to the 2 to make it 52. <clears throat> there you can see you can easily keep on going. So that could be the 13 times tables, and it'll calculate indefinitely. If you want to know the 18 times tables, well, 0 times 18 is 0. So we're starting at the 0. Which way to go? Here's something, 18. Let's head this way. We're crossing by just one number now. So that means the next one in the sequence has to be down here at the 6. So 2 times 18 is 36. Then we're going to go over here, because we're passing by one number. The next one has to be at the 4. If we're at 36 already, it can't be 44. That's not big enough, so it has to be 54. And then that way, just with a little bit of logic, we can figure this out. Now the next one would be crossing 1 and heading up to the 2. So there will emerge a pattern up around here and back up to the 0. So that would give us at least the 18 times tables. This is another way of showing times tables. <clears throat> There's 12 lines here, and it goes like this for the times tables. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and down here is 10, 11, 12 times. The mind general... Thank you. The, <laughs> the mind generally takes pictures in three. So these three go together, these three, these three, and then down here are these bottom three, and down here is what we call the root cellar, where the root of the number lives. So what we do with the students is we practice by saying, well, 1, 7 is 7, 14 is 2 sevens, 21 is 3 sevens. And down in the root, for all these different houses that we draw, we put the number times itself. So that's 49. Now, the trick is with the children and anyone learning this, including adults, you have to memorize and catch this picture. So what we do with the students in class, after we've shown this a few times, then we say, we randomly pick out these numbers. And generally, it's better if you save the four times and the seven times till the end of the exercise. And we do a little game like this. We'll say, I'll put my hand under the number, and then I'll say, the class will go, I'll say, what is three times seven? And everybody will go, 21. And I'll say, goodbye, 21. Yeah, I've heard that. And then we go, say, here, what's five sevens? And the class yells out, 35. And the teacher says, goodbye, five, 35. 35. Then we jump around and we say, oh, what's, uh, what's this one? Seven times uh, nine times, what's that? Oh, seven times nine is 63. Goodbye, 63. 63. Leaving the, the four and the seven till the end. Goodbye, 28. 49. Seven times is 49. 49. Then, how to make this exciting for the students, after they've reviewed this a few days, then you do this game where you try, you, you say, I'm going to try to beat you and get the number down there before you can call it out. And it's one of the times you can really let them call out numbers. So I'll go like this and I'll pretend I'm putting it here and I'll go, and they'll all go, 14. And as you can see, if you go through the whole thing like this a few times, they'll, this will be in, they'll have this picture and they'll know what two times seven.